Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is John Cummings. I'm the CEO of Hemptown. Uh, Hemptown is a vertically integrated uh, hemp company that specializes in all of the non-psychoactive cannabinoids. Um, we'll get to that in a minute and talk about the company. Um, but if you will indulge me, I'll do a short video to kind of tell you a little bit about who we are. Magic happens in the Emerald Triangle, where conditions are damn near perfect for growing the best hemp in the world. Nothing ordinary about our seeds either. These are genetics cooked up right here in Oregon, producing less than 0.3% THC and kicking out 15 to 20% full spectrum cannabinoids. Last year, we harvested 110,000 pounds. This year, well over a million. By the end of the year, we'll be one of the largest CBG producers in the U.S. of A. This plant has always had the power to change the world. Now it can, and it is. And it's happening right here at Hemptown, USA. Thank you. Let me get back out of this. Oh wait, no, is this it right here? Here we go. So, as you saw in the video, Hemptown USA, we're a feminized, uh, well, we specialize in feminized genetics. Uh, we are a vertically integrated uh, hemp company. Um, let's talk about real fast. Sorry, give me a second to get to this. Some of the highlights of uh, what we do and kind of what's happening in the industry right now. Um, you know, we are an established operating hemp company. Uh, the farm bill passed in uh, December of 2018. There's a lot of companies out there that are just grabbing up land on the concept that they'll just for the first time go out and produce you know, millions of pounds of uh, hemp biomass farming for the first time. Uh, there's a lot of risk and uh, in, in a lot of those assumptions. It's not the easiest plant to grow um, and requires a knowledge base. And so we've been successfully growing hemp. Uh, we had a 110,000 pound uh, harvest on 50 acres uh, last season. Um, our genetics are industry leading. Uh, potency is about 12 to 18%. Uh, and then we'll continue to be a leader in what are called the novel cannabinoids. 113 cannabinoids in the cannabis plant. Uh, you all heard of THC. It's one that everybody knows and loves. It's an industry built around that one specific cannabinoid. Uh, CBD is what everyone thinks of when they think of health and wellness and things that are unrelated to THC. Um, but CBD is only one of uh, about 112 additional cannabinoids. Um, if you're taking or if you've ever taken a full spectrum product, meaning it was derived from oil and it has the full plant profile in it, uh, and you've felt the benefits of that product, uh, there's a good chance that your body might not even be reacting to the CBD. It could be one of the trace cannabinoids that are also in the profile. So, uh, you know, we'll continue to develop genetics that will express these cannabinoids uh, going past CBD into CBG this year. Uh, CBG, uh, we'll get to it in a minute, uh, is probably one of the more uh, effective cannabinoids as in, in, the, in the health, you know, in, in benefits of health and wellness. Um, we operate at margins uh, in the high 70s to mid 80s percentage wise. Um, we have state, we have operations in three states, Oregon, Kentucky, uh, and Colorado, also soon in California. Um, so, you know, we're spread around, uh, you know, here in the United States and then plans to expand uh, outside of the U.S. And over the next couple of years. We have a management team comprised of experts from the cannabis industry, farm industry, biosciences industries, uh, and also in, like, in farm dist you know, produce distribution as well. Um, we'll talk about the management team a little bit uh, here in a minute. Oh, would you? That would be fantastic. Yeah, I'd appreciate point, that. Point okay. Um, as an established market leader, uh, we've been, like I said, we've been hiring uh, hemp uh, since 2017. And, you know, we are recognized and have memberships on most of the hemp uh, councils as well uh, and associations. Uh, you want to go ahead? Uh, here's our, our proven our operators. Uh, Rod Wolderman was the founder of the company. He started the farm in Oregon several years ago. He was growing in THC cannabis initially. Uh, he's a farmer from Iowa. He's been doing this for generations uh, and made the pivot to hemp two seasons ago. Uh, price compression in the cannabis uh, in market in Oregon took prices from you know $1,000 uh, a pound down to about $200. Uh, and, the, and you can only grow in Oregon uh, in, you know, on licensed uh, 
acreage and, and they only give you about one to two acres at a time. And that really is the difference between right now the THC industry and the businesses and companies that are specifically focused on that and the hemp business. THC business, if you, whether it's grown indoors or outdoors, preferably indoors, uh, you know, they, that business can scale at a rate of about 10,000 square feet at a time, uh, where we scale in acres. You know, just this season, so we farmed 50 acres last year, we're going to be farming 2,088 acres this year. Um, so it is a bigger agricultural uh, market, uh, bigger agricultural business model uh, that can scale at large size and produce you know, large, large quantities of, of product on our farm that then get processed through our processing uh, facilities as well. So Rod's been doing this you know, pretty much his whole life. Uh, I've been in the cannabis industry for three years, worked with over 100 different cannabis companies in California, uh, last of which was King's Garden, which is the largest indoor vertically integrated cannabis company in, uh, in Southern California. Uh, we've got on the banking side, Michael Townsend, who's set up and started and taken public a number of successful uh, companies over the years. Ross is from the Mondavi family. Uh, he's been selling produce and, and you know, um, uh, commodity agriculture you know, for 30 years. And Dr. Gordon Chu uh, is our chief science officer, uh, specializes in formulations uh, and uh, uh, in the things as, a, as well as like graphene uh, and some more leading edge technologies, uh, which we think will come into play with the fiber uh, for hemp down the line. You could, yeah, that'd be great, thank you. So, what happened in 2018 in December when the Farm Bill was released, was, was approved, you basically created a core crop in, this, in its industry almost overnight, okay? So the hemp industry hasn't, hasn't existed on store shelves. Uh, the amount of acres planted last year was less than a million. Um, and now with the hemp you know, Farm Bill passing, uh, it will become a core crop uh, in this country. It will sit in the crop rotations of farms right in there with soybeans and corn uh, and tobacco. In fact, our Kentucky farms are all, far, are all uh, um, R.J. Reynolds tobacco growers. Um, and they'll just rotate it in as they do with other crops. And we're, you know, this is going to become a significant crop in this country as big as any of these others. Um, our crop's going to, you know, we'll be targeting, as I said earlier, CBG. Uh, the market research, everybody's saying $22 billion. I think that could easily be a low figure. Um, Walgreens and CVS have announced that they'll carry hemp-infused products in their stores, uh, where the TH indus THC industry only has light, a few, you know, few hundred or thousand licensed uh, dispensaries where they can sell their products. CBD's just basically being given a, you know, a store on every commercial corner in America. And we're beginning to see it show up in products of all types. Um, so yes, yeah, so we've created a, basically a brand new industry, uh, and you know, the new, and all of these brands and opportunities are going to start to emerge. For our company, uh, we looked at what our strategic differentiators should be. Uh, two things: we know we'll see price compression in CBD over time; it'll become a, you know, a commodity like just about anything else. Um, however, as new cannabinoids uh, and those genetics are developed, uh, then the opportunity to create unique formulations, uh, provide the solutions to pharmaceutical companies, uh, will allow us to like you know um, kind of avoid some of these um, compression problems that are going to exist with you know with just straight CBD farmers. Um, our standard operating procedures and, me and mechanicized farming methods allow us to scale safely and faster than a lot of other growers. Um, you know, again, our knowledge base uh, you know, goes back years. Uh, we work with farmers in states that have also had some hemp experience as well. Uh, so this will allow us to you know, um, safely and, and you know, grow uh, our crops and, and, and deliver the projections that we forecast. Uh, and then we're using a pharmaceutical-driven approach, um, you know, following FDA standards. Uh, our facilities are CGMP and ISO accredited. Uh, this will allow us to make a product supply uh, that can, you know, safe, can produce a product that, you know, the cons consumers can have confidence in. Um, our genetics comes from a family up in Oregon who've been doing this for quite a while. We have an exclusive uh, relationship with them. We get 20% of their feed stock or their seed stock every single year. Uh, other hemp farms uh, have tried to do business with the with Oregon CBD, and it's just you know they're in high demand, and 
Uh, they are very picky about who they work with. Uh, we're happy to have that relationship. Um, you know, we'll be growing again over 500 acres of CBG this year, creating uh, a million pounds of CBG biomass. Uh, CBG is the precursor to all cannabinoids. When the plant first starts its life cycle and begins to flower, all of the, you know, at week three, when you see those tiny little buds, all of the, everything, all of the cannabinoid in there is CBG. And what it does over its growth cycle is it converts that CBG based on its genetics into the other cannabinoids in the profile, and then you'll get the dominant cannabinoid that's expressed in that genetic, whether it's THCA or whether it's CBD or, in our case, CBG. So um, what we've done is they've back through some crossbreeding techniques and years and years of genetic design, uh, not GMO, by the way. Um, uh, they've developed a strain where the CBG just simply does not convert, so the plant ends up having a 10 to 12% CBG uh, dominant profile uh, at harvest. So where people in the past of trying to capture G have had to harvest their, their crops in the third week, it was resulting in really low yields, which is what has set the price point so high, uh, we'll be doing 2,000 pounds an acre with G. Uh, and if you think about it in the market right now, so every product that's in the marketplace is a CBD product. There's no product differentiation between anyone at the moment because it's just D, 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 D. Introducing a novel cannabinoid to the marketplace and allowing formulators to actually now create products that have two, G, you know, either one, either G ball by safe or a combination of the both D and G, gives them this differentiation that they, everybody in the market is seeking right now. So, sitting on the world's largest supply of CBG puts us in a very strong position uh, to be able to leverage that into these with these formulators. Uh, from both a price point standpoint, but also just you know, continuing to build those sales channels to the company as well. Uh, and again, the, you know, the higher yield genetics uh, increase our margins. Uh, so we discussed most of this. So here you'll see the compression that's taking place in the CBD market right now. This is kilograms of isolate and the, the pricing for it this year. Uh, we're sitting up at about six to nine, or about seven to nine thousand dollars back last fall. Uh, it's you know now gone down to six. It'll probably sit at four, and you'll see what CBD will you know probably when it gets to commodity pricing sit around three thousand dollars a kilogram. G on the other case sells, and it costs just as much to grow G as it costs to grow D. Yeah, is currently selling for twenty-five thousand dollars a kilogram. We'll see a little bit of compression to twenty and ten thousand dollars but we'll be making with our, G line, with our G genetics and our G biomass about five times uh, the projected revenue from companies that are just currently selling CBD. Um, our standard operating procedures and our knowledge base, you know, we've had a lot of success, so we're just gonna simply scale that and apply it to our um, uh, contract farmers. We also meet the certifications of the U.S. Hemp Authority, which is important to us, so that our hemp is indeed certified. You can go on. It's <clears throat> is that on there twice? Is it? Okay, multi-state presence. So we are currently in Oregon, Colorado, um, Kentucky, and we've got about 40 acres in California as well. We have gone from 50 acres last year to over 2,000 acres this year. Um, our, our operation in Oregon uh, includes both the, you know, the farm plus an additional 40,000 square foot of processing facility. Uh, again, we've been growing in the, on the same piece of land now for eight years. Uh, the soil's tested. We know how the genetics perform in the different soil types. Uh, and we'll be planting our G genetics exclusively in Oregon. This little valley in Oregon is part of what's considered the Emerald Triangle. Uh, the Appalachian in this part of the world is just, the, it makes it the very best growing region in the world for feminized hemp. Uh, that's why we're able to get the yields that we get. Uh, we project 2,000 pounds a yield, excuse me, 2,000 pounds an acre, uh, but we've actually performed above that there as well. It's the Napa Valley of, of, of outdoor cannabis, if you want to kind of think about it that way. Um, can you move on? Uh, we do contract farming in Colorado and Kentucky. Uh, in Kentucky, we had the opportunity through a tobacco distributor to reach out to 19 farmers. Um, well, more than that, you know, coming, but at the moment it's 19. Uh, they're all tobacco farmers. Um, probably the closest crop to hemp to grow is tobacco. It requires the same infrastructure, same drying facilities, 
uh, same growing season more or less. So these farmers, and they've also been growing hemp under the, the University of Kentucky's research program for the last three years. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got 19 farmers. We'll be do 588 acres there this year. But those farmers collectively own 26,000 acres. So after this season, we'll probably increase our growing, uh, contract growing uh, capacity in the uh, state of Kentucky to about 5,000 acres, which on its own would produce 10, 000, 10 million pounds of biomass. Uh, we're working with a family in Colorado. Uh, currently, we'll be farming on 1,000 acres in Colorado this year as well. So as a vertically integrated company, uh, we'll be, our use of proceeds on the capital raise that we just did will be to build out our extraction facilities, um, which uh, we have a small operation in Oregon presently, but we will put primary extraction in each of the four states that you just saw right next to or near uh, our farm operations, um, where we'll be yielding about 25,000 kilograms of CBG uh, crude oil this year and 40,000 kilograms of CBD. So you just saw the pricing back there on the previous page, at, you know, $20,000 a kilogram. There's a lot of uh, upside and money to be made uh, this year. Our paths to growth. So our first, path, our first uh, point of our strategy was expansion of our farming operations. Uh, and now next we'll be uh, building out our vertical integration and our, our extraction facilities. Um, we're also investing in a pharmaceutical company, a nutraceutical company in uh, Portland, Oregon, that will bring us the uh, ISO and G CGMP facilities that we need to create our own brands. Uh, and then we'll you know, build our sales channels, continue to build our sales channels from there, uh, and then expand our product formulations with additional cannabinoids as we take on new genetics each season. Go ahead. Just to give you kind of a, just a brief overview uh, of the economics uh, for us uh, over the next year. Um, you know, we'll be looking at you know, our CBG isolate targeting about $20,000 uh, a kilogram and producing 25,000 kilograms of uh, CBG isolate. Um, for us, you know, and this is again, this is what you know, the advantage of the hemp industry versus, you know, versus cannabis, uh, it costs us about five to $10 a pound to grow feminized hemp in our operations and process it. Indoor cannabis costs close to $1,000 a pound to grow. Uh, so that's why we see margins between 78 and 85% uh, in our business. Uh, and then our products are everything from grade A top flower to buds, pre-rolls, the biomass that we can sell to either or process ourselves or sell to other processors. And their crude oil and our isolate and distillate. Uh, if you want to advance. So this is kind of our economics at a glance. Uh, we plant about 1,600 plants per acre, um, per each plant producing about a little over one, almost one and a quarter pounds, uh, so that we see yields of you know, 2,000 pounds per acre. Uh, and then on the revenue on those acres for CBD is about $130,000 in revenue on about $10,000 in expense, uh, and then close to $300,000 an acre on CBG uh, because of where the market prices are for G at the moment. Um, processing, pro pre-processing pricing this year sat at about, we, we, you know, we are 110,000 pound crop, we sold it through between 58 and $70 a pound. Uh, so if, even if we saw compression in the CBD market to, you know, to $30, which would be about half of what the market was this year, 2 million pounds of biomass at $30 is $60 million in revenue, just with our D. Our seed costs are a dollar a seed for D and about two dollars a seed for CBG. You see the breakout of all the other costs. Um, so on 500 acres of, of farm, uh, we'll produce uh, you know roughly about uh, 180 million in revenue. So the company just did a 30 million dollar convertible debenture through our lead broker, which is Canon Accord Genuity out of Vancouver. Uh, that round closed this week. Uh, we'll be doing a $10 million equity round in about six weeks. It includes non-incredited investors. Uh, and then we'll schedule to go public uh, on the NASDAQ this fall, probably in November, right after we've announced uh, our crop yields from this season's, uh, season's harvest. 
We've already purchased the five and a half million seeds that we need to grow this year. Uh, they're currently propagating in greenhouses, and those plants will be planted on the acres that you saw in the, you know, in the deck uh, by mid-June. Uh, we'll be harvesting mid-September, uh, and you know, I think I've said it already, but we're projected three million pounds of biomass uh, for, uh, for sale come fall. Anybody have uh, any questions? Right. So what we do, so we all the the, the operations in Oregon are 100 percent owned and operated by us. We take on all the expense. Our contract farming in Kentucky, we have a contract relationship with those farmers where we're where they're growing exclusively for us. We provide the seeds at our expense. They provide all of the growing the, throughout the, all the expenses of growing throughout the season, uh, and then they deliver to us dried and bagged. They have to follow our standard operating procedures. Um, that has to be dried and cured you know, a specific way. Um, and then it gets to us, we owe them 38% of the market price uh, you know, for, the, for the biomass at that moment, spread out over eight monthly payments. Correct. Yeah, so, we're, so, like, so our, what, what the, what the way that we were projecting our numbers is we're saying, okay, so this season we weren't vertically integrated. We just sold our, process, our biomass right to third-party processors, which we don't intend to do this year. We made this year's revenue from that crop will come in between seven and eight million. If we had been vertically integrated, it'd have been closer to 20. Um, but I think we'll have all the sales channels available to us. Um, the processing clients that we had this year would like to have the entire crop. Uh, so we see that as our worst case. You know, so at you know, $30 a pound, if we just sold the whole thing to the third-party processor, we know what our what our you know, our bottom line revenue uh, looks like, um, but as you know, we, we bring on our processing facilities. We intend to you know wholesale uh, and white label our oils and isolates to large retailers, uh, and then also launch our own lines. So we're kind of playing in every you know in every single uh, lane that we can. Um, well, do you mean like as far as the states that we've selected, or right? Well, so yeah, so rotations of the farmers. I mean, yeah, so it, it's it's their kind of decision how they want to rotate their crops. You know, their contracts with us. You know, they've got so many acres that they need to plant each year. Yeah, yeah. In Oregon, well, so in Oregon, yeah, we're just we uh, we own them by land, and, and we're almost full time hemp. You know, the hemp restores uh, nutrients to the soil surprisingly. Um, you know, it's, it doesn't rob soils of nutrients, so there's not a lot of amendments to do. You don't have to rotate other crops. You don't have to do winter cover. Um, if that's, does that answer? You're, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, here's the analogy I use uh, to describe this. Um, in 1986, when the first cell phone came out, it was this giant brick, and it could only make do one thing. It had one feature, phone call. That's all it was able to do. Now we have smartphones that have thousands of apps and all kinds of different uses and so on and so forth. Um, the CBD industry is that old phone right now. You know, it, it's a one-trick uh, industry. It's got one product. It's got one of the cannabinoids that it's been able to produce at scale. So as all these new ones come on, you know, come into existence, and the, and the scientific understanding and the health benefits of each one, you know, also you know becomes a little more widely known, or you know these research companies, you know, figure it out, then you're just going to have these, you know, the genetics express all these different cannabinoids. And now you can create really specific formulations that have very specific, you know, um, applications and to wellness in the human body. So. Yeah, and I don't think we've even really begun to unlock uh, what all this can do. I mean, even now, CBG, I think people have had great responses to it, but it's been in such trace amounts because you know, the only way they're getting it is in this broad spectrum, so maybe it's only maybe a milligram or two if they're lucky. Um, now that we, have, we can put 40 milligram concentrated doses of G into products, it's going to be interesting and exciting to see uh, you know, how people respond to that. Yeah. 
I think so. I think, well, I think we, uh, I mean, on the B2B side, the formulators already know. Kind of, you know, you know the, so the technology is ahead of the consumer market right now, and the formulator's understanding of it is uh, as they, you know, begin to, you know, design formulations and, and they want to combine different cannabinoids into things and then they bring it to the market, then the consumer will also understand. Uh, you could probably do, do a survey, you know, in a room and ask people how many of, how many of you have ever heard of CBG and you're not going to hear very many people that do. Um, but that's going to change. I mean, you know, and, and I mean, it's, it, this is happening. It's, you know, it, and it's going to be happening very quickly. Yeah, so well, we are. I mean, so in you know, our booth's over here, so feel free to come talk to us. Um, you know, we did an institutional financing just now, uh, as a, just, just closed this week, uh, uh, 30 million Canadian. Um, that was a convertible debenture that has a $2 cap on it. So, it, you know, so if you're going to give a valuation to the company right now, fully diluted, 64 million shares at two bucks is $128 million. Uh, we will do a, an equity round uh, for, to raise another 10 million in about six weeks. We will sell, that is available to non-accredited investors, so we welcome anyone. Uh, and it'll be priced probably between $2.50 and $3 a share. Uh, the IPO uh, will take place this fall. We're already in conversations with several of the larger institutions here in the U.S. to do it. Uh, Roth Capital probably will bat will be our sponsor and take us out on Nasdaq. And you know we'll be forecasting. You know again, right at that time, we'll be announcing that we had a three million pound harvest, and our advisory on revenue for the next year will probably be north of 150 million dollars. So you know based on what you see in the market comparables. I think that puts us at a pretty healthy evaluation on a diluted basis. I mean, we're probably at that point looking at 75 million shares. Yeah. I mean, so right now, I mean, it, it, it's 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 brand new. I got to tell you, you know, the heart, the yeah, you know, there was some products, CBD products, in, in THC dispensaries. So you know you would see uh, THC biomass going into products for those shells and combined with THC into formulations. That way, it kind of TV, they piggybacked on the back of THC to get to the consumer because uh, it wasn't you know technically allowed to be sold um, legally in any stores outside of that uh, market. Um, so you know that's where most of it was going. A lot of it's going into research as well. Uh, so this is the first year we've really seen a you know a, like a, a, a robust you know, uh, market for the commodity. And yeah, so the 110,000 pounds that we harvested just this last fall got sold uh, to processors who've processed it as isolate and then most of it's been uh, sold over in Europe. The pricing in isolate's about, in Europe is about twice what it is here. Oh, are we really, you can come find me, I'll be happy to answer anything. Sure, thank you guys, I appreciate it.